the bar oil tank is full of oil. But while it's running, no oil's getting to the bar. Hey y'all, thanks for tuning back into Chicanic. I hope everybody's having a great week. Winter is coming. Now many of you have already broke out the chainsaws and a bunch of you are fixing to, but before you do, this is the first thing you need to check. Every time you go to start your chainsaw up, this is the first thing you're gonna wanna do. I got my steel MS-440, I'm gonna show you what. going to want to point the tip towards the ground or something a light service where you can tell if it's making a difference or not and see if you get that steady stream of oil coming off the tip of your bar. Now you should see it pretty quick. If you don't, you might got problems. All right, so you start your chainsaw up, you point it towards the ground, you run it, you don't see any oil coming out. Next thing to try is taking your side cover off. Give it a good go, give it a few revs and check. Do not look at it while you're running it, but stay on this side. And then after you've given it a few revs, check and see if you have a steady stream of oil coming out of your oil vein right here. If you don't, then you know you have bigger oiler issues. If you do have oil coming out that side though, you need to check your bar because a lot of times the hole where the oil travels through your bar gets clogged up with sawdust. But my customer with his steel MS-311 chainsaw not only didn't check to see if it was oiling, he ran it with the chain brake on. Halfway through his cutting, stuff starts smoking. He goes to check. He doesn't have any oil coming out through the tip of his bar, but it's all pouring out the bottom here. So I thought this would be a great example to show you all the components of your oiler system and how to fix it all by yourself to save you some time, money, and frustration in the future. Now I have seen these in much worse shape. This one actually got off pretty good. You can see how it started to melt all the way around here. And on this side, I've seen it melt to where you couldn't even get the sprocket off. So let's start tearing it apart. First, we got our little E-clip. You just get your screwdriver in there, pop it off, and you've got a washer. And fortunately, this one came off. Now, that's a crazy amount of rust in there. He said he had put a new clutch on a while back, which this thing's been sitting in water or something. Remove our bearing. Next, we got to remove the clutch. Now we have to stop the piston to get the clutch off and you can just stick a piece of rope down there if that's all you've got, but I highly recommend getting a piston stop. I leave them at my Amazon store and I'll leave one in the description box below. Now we've lowered our piston, we've put our piston stop in. Whenever we go to take it off though, we wanna keep turning this until it stops. And that way we know that the top of the piston is up against the piston stop. You do not want to try to take it off, especially with your battery powered tools, without having it already pressed against the top of the piston, because if you hit it too hard, it can knock a hole right through the top of your piston. And that is not good. Now, when you take these off, they are backwards thread, so it's not lefty loosey righty tidy. We're going to be going forward. Just like that. Let's see what we've got going on here. We've got our washer. And wow, that thing melted off. This rod here is usually part of the worm gear. This is our worm gear. Have to get it out. Huh, totally melted the top off that thing. And Oiler doesn't look too bad. I'm going to check this gear right here, make sure it's good. Oh, this 90 degree oil uh, line here is hard plastic and it's completely melted. You can see all the melted chunks all the way around in here. And this line is also completely melted. Hmm. We also want to check and make sure that the chain brake is still working. And it is. As you can see, it tightens like that and loosens back up. That's good. Wow, that thing is super melted, but we got really lucky. I think that the oiler itself is still in good shape. I'm trying to get you in here where you can see now this oiler gear right here, you're going to want to turn it and make sure that all of the fins, fan 
part of this gear is still intact. If it is bad, you will see a complete worn out spot in these fins right here. But this one looks good. And go ahead and just, you know, let these soak in something for a bit. Now to get a better look, we're going to want to take this side cover off. There's two bolts holding it on. You'll need your T27 to take it off, but be careful. This is where your chain brake is. Um, it's not just going to fly out at you, or it shouldn't, but you never know. So I think I'm going to be able to change these uh, two lines out without having to remove all of my chain brake contraption. I'm going to unscrew the oiler and I'll be able to change this 90 out. Now I am going to have to um, empty the oil out of the bar tank and uh, change this rubber line out because it also has a filter on the end of it. But let's go ahead and dig into it. First thing I want to do is pour this bar oil out. That thing is full of chunky. Um, another thing to always check with because you, it's always full of sawdust around the bar oil cap. So clean it off because if you get a bunch of debris into your bar oil tank, it's going to clog up that filter inside and that'll make it not oil either. To clean that, you'll just want to dump your oil out, spray it with some carburetor cleaner, maybe some gasoline, swish it around, keep cleaning out until you get that filter clean. So what all are we changing out? We've got a brand new worm gear if you need one. The part number is a 1125-640-7110. And as you can see, it has this spring on it. That's what it's supposed to look like. We do have a new elbow connector. It is a 1127-640-9200. And a new oil line. That is a part number 1140-647-9401. Get this oiler on Pop off there. That just comes off like that. Turn it to the side. Just an O-ring holding it in there. Sweet. I'm not sure if I can pull it out a little bit this way and then cut it so I can pull it out through the tank. Yeah, it came right out. Now I am using the same bar oil filter that came out of it. They don't have like a mesh to them or anything. It, it's really just to keep large chunks of debris out. So I can just blow this thing out and put it on my new one. Now, fortunately we don't have to attach this once the line's already installed. Since the filter is smaller than the actual grommet that goes through the housing, I can go ahead and put the filter on now and feed it through the hole on the outside by the oiler. So we're just going to Feed it on in. Now, I'm trying to show you, once you stick it in there, it gets stuck on that first little plastic part right there. So we're gonna want to pull it from this way to get it around that corner. That's where the handy dandy hemos come in. You need to uh, get some of these if you don't have them. I leave them in the description box below or at my Amazon store. Just like that. Mm, no, you can see I've got it all pulled in there. I just got to get the grommet snugged in. And here's what it looks like from this side. I just got to push that in there now. And you can actually just push it in with your fingers. And the 90 L is easy. You're just going to have it cocked off to the side here when you push it down in. Oh, other way. Push it in there and twist. Just like that. Now we're going to install it all back in there. on that. Just like that. Alright, I'm going to install the worm gear again. I'm going to go ahead and just put a little bit of grease here on the inside. Slide that on down. Now this little tip of the worm gear, whenever we put our uh, sprocket back on, there is a little notch that we have to mesh up with that because that's what actually turns the oiler to let the machine oil correctly. So, and we'll see that whenever we put it back together. So, 
oiler first, then you have your washer. Now, a lot of people put these in backwards and that will make it not oil either. Everything will get locked up in here. So it has one side that says top, top is out. They could have put out. I don't know why they did that, but so that goes that way. Then we're going to put our clutch back on. Now I did clean these up as good as I could, but yeah, well, that's as good as it's gonna get. So, and then remember it's backwards threads. I'm going to turn it until it stops. Now, sometimes you want to remove the, it will be pushing on the rewind assembly and you want to remove that, but I think this one is uh, about bottomed out, so that's good. And work. Next, we're going to grease up our bearing here. And we got to find that little prong to put our sprocket back on correctly. And it's right there. There we go. And if it doesn't connect a lot of times, it'll still be pooched up and won't seat all the way so you'll know that it's not on that bracket correctly. Now we've got our outside washer and our clip. Just like that. Get our side cover back on. So you're ready to see if she oils? I am. We have a steady stream of oil. Ooh. Works perfectly. That's water from where I just washed it, but there's the oil stream right there. Great. So guys, thanks again for tuning in to Chicanic. Hopefully this video saves you time, money, and frustration in the future and keeps you out of the repair shop. Want to watch some more steel chainsaw repairs? Check these videos out right here.